He ale nuts house with his system Brutus 10. And this is Lonnie McAllister, the alester. <laughs> he has the, uh, I want to say that. He has the Brewcast Ale Nuts. Go to alenuts.com. Right, tell us about your system, Lonnie. What are we doing here today? Well, we're all almost fired up and ready to go. I got, uh, we're doing a cream meal today. Uh, recipe Moonbeam I have. And uh, it's done a pretty good deal for us in there on the wall, you may have seen. But uh, one of my favorite brews. It's a 11 gallon brew, uh, 15 gallon kettles. And um, you've gone to the website, I'm sure, and seen all about it. Alenuts.com. But um, right now we have the sparge, the sparge water is ready to go, the HLT right here, and the mash tank's ready to go. Um, I've got everything fired up at 158 degrees, which is my strike temperature water, bringing down about 148 on the mash. And then uh, I've got 174, 175 degree HLT water already ready for the sparge in about an hour. We'll do the sparge. But um, basically it's running all by itself. If I don't know if your camera can pick up the little pilots down here, but it's a very basic, basic yeah. pilot system. Uh, I have two little pilot lights that are, are plumbed off of the gas beam back there that stay lit all day. Fired them up at 7 o'clock this morning with a little bitty pilot of about 2 inch flame under each of these burners. And uh, the love temperature controllers controls everything else. They just now, open this little gas valve back here. And now you have a set of full plan blueprints that you sell for this, right? Yeah, uh, on the website there's a set of prints we sell, I don't know, one or two a week. And uh, I try to help everybody out, available through email. They'll buy the plans and try. It's just got all the dimensions, 24, all the 24 by 36, or do you get it down to 11 by 17 for now, or what size? No, it's all in Adobe. Adobe. It's, it's main, mainly information. You don't need much okay. It just it's tells you all the dimensions. dimensions. Yeah, dimensions. yeah, so if you're a serious home brewer and you want a system of the of the pros, the big guys, you need to build a system like Bruce. I'm going to accept that and take that. Yeah, I'm gonna dump in the malt. You know, a lot of people trickle this malt in, but uh, not here, man. I've got a. Uh, I think six and a half gallons in there was what this recipe called called for at 160 degrees strike water and uh, I don't know I don't know I guess about a um, should I have a look at the recipe now about 14 pounds or so but of course clean mail is a pretty simple recipe. Yeah, I never was one to trickle the malt in. Just dump it in and go for it. Oh, that smells good. Yeah. Well, a malt paddle, man, I tell you, you know, using a spoon, there was a big difference. Where'd you get that? This, uh, when you bought this from B3, Beer, Beer, More Beer, and they were so simple to make. It's ridiculous. She bought this for a Christmas gift, so. Actually, one of my favorite toys. Are you talking about breaking up dough balls? This thing does it. Got to get me one. Yeah, uh, what's the next step? Well, right now we've already started the mash. You saw us dump the grain in. And uh, I still don't know what the recipe is. I don't know what it is. Um, I set up a recirculation in the mash pot only. I wouldn't call this a rim system. I wouldn't call it a herms. I call it a direct fired mash. So it's got a full false bottom in there. Uh, the mash is slowly uh, recirculating on, back. All right, what's next, Lonnie? What are we doing now? Well, I've got the mash. You saw us put the grain in the mash. And uh, I've got it recirculating on itself right now, very slowly. And uh, it's a direct fire system, so I wouldn't call it a rims. A recirculating infusion mass yeah, system. fire underneath. Uh, exactly. Fire. Right. And it's not a herms. I'm not going out of the pot into another exchanger and back to the mash. It's all direct fire. So there's a, a very slight flame under the, flame, uh, under the pot. If it needs to come on, it to come on. And I want to keep the mash about 148. Uh, the differential on this is... Uh, two degrees. So right now it reads 147. That reads 148. Right, so your pump, logs. your pump is pulling out here. You got a temperature probe exactly. in the T, which tells the love controller here what the temperature is doing. And if it needs to, it turns the burner, the burner on very slowly. I've got a very slow recirculation going. It's the pump stop wide open. It's just recirculating very slowly. You just want to keep the mash moving underneath that full pulse bottom, so you don't scorch it. It's all it takes. Just a little bit of movement. So it's taking the mash out very slowly. 
and we turn it to the top here. So and you got you got the return in the lid. Yeah, the, the return in the, in the lid is just a curved tube that touches the side of the pot right here. Kind of swirls it in there. And well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it swirls it in a little bit. Keep the temperature on the top. Yeah, keep the temperature on the top on the water on top of the mash. It swirls around and it falls through the mash evenly throughout the whole mash. Which I think you got, so you got the valve pinched down a little bit. Yeah, the, the valve, the valve's so choked down one shift. Slow the slow the circulation. You just heard the burner come on to drop down to 146. Just stop at 148. Just shut the burner off and it'll maintain that picture on as long as I want. How accurate is that? How accurate? Very accurate. Able to control it with that degree if you want. Exactly. And that's the point. And now the, that's the only thing about these thin stainless pots. Uh, you've got to have some kind of temperature control. On a cold day, if we were outside in the wind, the wind hits this pot, it would cool the mash down pretty quick. Well, you could insulate it. You could get uh, yeah, you could. insulation. Something's got to be something that's not going to catch fire. That's right. Because then it would get too hot. Right. <laughs> well, we, I have good luck, though, with the re recirculation. It keeps it pretty, pretty controlled. Especially with that full false bottom yeah. I got. And to me, that's pretty important, which keeps the whole mash at the same temperature. So, and that's a whole other show is about using all other, you know, taking the, the mash from one small point, you know. Right. But you have to do a show on that. Well, that's what right about it, I guess. So, uh, it is a whole show. <laughs> all right. See, now we're going. Sparge, take one. Quiet on the set? Yeah, quiet on the set. <laughs> all right. Well, what are we doing now, Lonnie? The first bit is to drink a lot of beer. Yeah, buddy. And all around. Yeah, it's 10.30, man. We've only been drinking here a few hours. And I think, I'm pretty sure we're brewing a cream ale. Cream ale. We're still brewing a cream ale. Yeah, I think we're still brewing a cream ale. But we're ready to spark right now. We've done an hour-long mash. All right. I did about a 10-minute mash out, which I just kind of... Up the flow a little bit, right. turn the flame you up a little bit. Set your temperature on the load right. controller to 170 to bring it. And we got the 168. Right. Exactly. Yeah, let this get to about 168. Did you get up to 170? But 168 is good enough. And um, what I did is slow the flow rate down now for just a slight trickle in the mash tun here, <coughs> and slow the flow rate down in the HLT to the same. Lift trickle. it up, we see. Okay, so it's just a little trickle. And I'm ready to sparge now, so I just shut the pumps off. It's real quiet that way. Now this is tough. This is complicated. And to spar, you just move that lid to there, and that lid to there. Sorry about that. Take that out. Hey, now this beats having a hundred valves. You got to try and figure out what's going on. Turn the pumps back on. We're sparking. All right. So now we're uh, going from here. Uh, here. Coming out of the mash tub into the kettle. Coming out of the HLT into the yeah. mash tub. Hot water, hot liquor time. Hot liquor tank into your mash tub, bottom mash tub at the false bottom, or back into your brew pot. That's it. We're mashing. Oh, we're sparking. All right, we uh, we mashed out, we got it in the, the brew pot, and brought it up to a bowl. And what are we about to do now, honey? It's the first edition of hops in. That's uh, three ounces of Liberty, and we'll put a one ounce in at the very end. But that's it. How many hops in the cream ale? Okay, so you just so, want a little bit of bitterness here. But just a little bit. Not be sweet. Yeah. That's what we're doing right now. And I use pellets this time. It's rare. I'm a whole lot guy. Um, and all they have was pellets and the liberty that I wanted to try. So well, we won't uh, tell anybody. We won't tell anybody that that's happening. It'll probably come out even better. Uh, that's where we're at now. The mash tons over there being cleaned. Uh, Moonbeam scrubbing fiercely the mash tons over there. 